please give a warm welcome to Lee Scott, our President and Chief Executive Officer, Walmart Stores Incorporated. Whoa! I know. Thank you. Thank you. pleasure for anybody to be the CEO of this company because you know it doesn't matter if you're Sam Walton or you're David Glass or you're Lee Scott when you come to this meeting year after year you get to say we had record sales we had record earnings we had record reinvestment back into our company but you know I say all that but let me tell you my friends you better be ready to be better because today, for whatever reason, whether it's our success or our size, Walmart Stores Incorporated has generated fear, if not envy, in some circles. And that makes it more important than ever that we focus on doing the right thing and doing things right every time. There's two things that we should do. Number one is tell the Walmart story. Get the message out there. And the second thing is stay the course. Walmart is too important to individual families who are stretching a budget. We're too important to the suppliers who employ millions of people. We're too important to our associates for whom we have so much love and value so much. And your company will continue to demonstrate our citizenship as a good employer and a member of the communities that we serve so well around this world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll promise you this. We're going to stay the course, and this company is going to continue to grow. Actually, H&H &H was started in 1962. Started on Main Street in Middlefield. A little country store that, uh, <clears throat> at that time, uh, I was starting a family and it was pretty difficult to know. It was a big decision. And uh, my brother-in-law and I decided, well, we were going to take that step and we went into business. And uh, started in a little one-room building that uh, had a full basement, but we did all the plumbing in the basement. But the upstairs retail area was very small and we were there for a year and a half to two years. And then we moved on to a larger, larger store and a shopping center. And, uh, Spent several years there, and uh, then we proceeded in 1992, built this facility here. This gentleman here, that happens to be my son. He's been a right-hand man for many, many years. It was much easier to retire in 96 when he was here to take over. One of the biggest parts of our store being out in our rural areas, what we call our hardware section, you know, and the, the nuts and the bolts and the nails and all the type of fasteners, that's always been good because a lot of the farmers were always mending machinery and things around the farm and some of the kids that were, you know, kids were kids when I was growing up, you know, in here, now they've got families and they come in here for the fix it up type things. Probably since I was eight, I'm down on Friday nights after, after school. Work till nine. You have the car out there? I worked here since I was six. <laughs> Swept or helped customers when I was young too. And at the end of the day, Grandpa and Dad would give us their pocket change. Spent a lot of late nights in here too, especially when we were building it. I generally arrive here about 7:15 in the morning, and I uh, unlock the door. I come in and turn the lights on, and and I get the the day money for each drawer in the registers and I open up the registers and usually at that time Tom is here and Tom goes ahead and kind of tidies up the front of the store and sets out the American flag and, and the benches for our customers to sit on and a lot of times the Amish fellas on their way to work will stop here for things that they need for their day's projects and they'll come up and get plumbing or electrical supplies or a lot of times sporting goods we have a, a busy sporting goods division
John has been preparing for it, uh, trying to change stock and inventory, keeping in mind basically to stay with service. If you can't compete in one area, we're going to stay with something that uh, is not offered or that you can compete in. Oh, I've probably been shopping here for 32 years or so. All my needs that, that I needed for hardware. The I don't mass need merchandisers, done. to a great extent, do not provide excellence in service. I'll use Walmart as an example, and you're really lucky if they have anyone in the plumbing section who knows anything about plumbing. We've been trying to get ready for them for the last probably 10 years. Had a meeting with all the guys, explained uh, the purpose of our job, make sure we do everything right and thorough, explained what Walmart did and what we do and what we can do different. This was brought to us by a customer of mine. He's so much against the Walmart movement after reading this book that he wanted to get some in and start passing them out or selling them to, to friends and mm -hmm. whatever it cost him. So that's basically, what I got a few extra ones. He's, he's taking several and getting rid of them and I'm doing the same. Well, I, I have never been in a Walmart store. I never intend to go in a Walmart store. I've never had the need and uh, I've never liked their principles. Uh, that's not nice to say at all, probably, but uh, I've seen a lot of small communities crucified and forced out, ma and pa operations that have been in business for years that are out on the street. They just had to close their doors just because of one entity. And it appears that that is their intent to come into a community and force everybody out. They did nothing but lay down the freaking red carpet for them. I know how hard it was for my dad, my grandfather, to build this building on this lot. They went through everything to try to get the commissioners and stuff to allow them to build here. I mean, we had to, you know, they got sign issues, got to be certain size. We had to have, make sure we had enough green around the area. I'm all for free enterprise, but when you look at, at the big picture, they're the, the people who own the company are the richest people in the world. Um, so in reality, I think they could, they could spread that out. Uh, I'm curious to see how much they'll actually give back to the community. To even use American with, with Walmart in the same sentence, just, just I, I don't agree with it all. It's, it's like a Chinese company to me, only with American board members. It's not a mystery. They, they come right out on record and said that they don't buy American. And all it's done is give China a better distribution center, whereas before they would have had to find contacts, who to sell to, and, de and develop their own markets. Now they've got a pipeline right in everybody's living room by going through Walmart. I think the government should have more control. You talk about monopolies. If Walmart's not a monopoly, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm not at all in favor of any kind of communism or socialism. I believe that America should always and forever remain free. However, I think that there need to be regulations established wherein, you know, they busted up Standard Oil and they busted up Mop Bill. But Walmart seems to be going on a rampage through the American economy, and nobody's even paying attention. I don't, I, the logic of it escapes me. And I spend a lot of time thinking about it. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative, and, uh, but I'm, I'm following very closely what's happening with the unions. It used to be that the union wage was something that everybody would look up at and say, wow, you know, he's a union worker, he's making you know, $18 or $20 an hour. And I realize that's what we're paying our people. We're, we're not unions. Yeah, I'm all for the unions doing whatever they can do and, you know, whether it be Walmart or Kmart or any, any store that's not going to pay a fair wage. I'm a staunch American. I love America. It's the finest, freest country in the world. I'd still, at my age, I'd fight and die for this country. But it seems that there are things going on within this country, particularly from a, a business and economic standpoint, that aren't for the good of the people. Uh, I mean, the people in mass, uh, you know, a small seg segment of the population is doing well by what's happening, but the greater majority of the people are being made subservient. I mean, Sam Walton, I don't think would be comfortable with the way things are going right now. I don't, I don't think this is why he started the store. It wasn't to, to crush other competition. We, we have people in this town, families who can't feed their children, and families who have their, the entirety of their belongings in a car and in a trailer, and are spending uh, most of their life in their car at the mall because they've been evicted from their homes because they can't find work. They can't find work. And I think there's a lot of people that don't realize there are those those people in town too. Right. I mean, you you say that's in Middlefield. Oh no, that's exactly. 
That's not the case. Uh, I was dreaming all of a sudden that the people in this town caught on to a great extent and we were all out in the street protesting. But I think the, likely, the likelihood of that happening is like, we'll probably see pigs pl fly before that. I put this business plan together that with the help of hard, different hardware organizations and, and people, and I went to uh, several different banks to, to check on some funding. And uh, when I got an appraisal on my, on the business and, and the buildings, the, you know, the, the appraiser actually came in and devalued the building. Here, I, I figured it'd be appreciating after like 10 years. And he came in with a, a lower value. And I questioned him, I said, how can this be? I says, you know, it was inflation and, and the economy's not great, but it still should be at least holding its value. And uh, he said, no, he said, uh, Anytime a Walmart's coming into a town, they, they knock the values down because sooner or later there's going to be a bunch of empty buildings and none of them are going to be able to sell. Any community on a grand opening is going to see a change, drop in sales. It, it happens regardless of whether it's Walmart or somebody else, you, you'll get a drop in sales. So uh, <clears throat> there'll be a dramatic change of some type. How long it'll last? can't last forever because you just can't stand the overhead if you don't have the business. So something has to happen. And let's hope it doesn't come to that point. But you never know. Well, right now, uh, after we liquidate Product. I'm in the process of trying to trying to sell the. We own the building, so I'm trying to sell the building as well as get somebody in here that'll be able to lease too. Um, I've got a couple people on the line right now that um, want to talk to me within the next couple days, and, and hopefully we'll work something out. We're going to sell the property, and um, you know I'll be able to pay all my bills and walk away without any debt. And, that's if it all works out right. And I, I pray that it will. I remember that like it was yesterday. To hell with it, Walmart by the damn town. You know, we'll shut them down. And we used to drive through towns going, six months, three months, six months, of when we'd be closing them. You drive up all the way up to New York City on Route 80. You can pull off at Clarion or any of those towns up there. And you'll see a Walmart up on the hill. You'll see a Perkins, maybe a Burger King. And then you'll drive farther into the town, and you'll see an empty town. It looks like a neutron bomb hit it. Well, I rode that ribbon highway. I saw above me the endless skyway. I saw they don't get it. When we start talking about quality of life, they start talking about cheap underwear. I keep saying you can't buy small town quality of life at a Walmart. They don't sell it. But once they steal it from you, you can't get it back at any price. I followed my footsteps through the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts. And all around me, a voice was calling. We thought it was the most fantastic thing in the world it that Walmart was coming to Grand Texas. I mean, it was like they had bestowed some great honor on the community. And we welcomed them literally with open arms. We, we you know, could not say enough good about them could not do enough for them to help them come. When Walmart first made the decision to come here, you could come to town on a Saturday evening and not find a parking place anywhere. I came to downtown Hearn on Saturday before Christmas and there was 12 cars in downtown Hearn. I counted them, 12 cars in downtown Hearn. That is pathetic.
Walmart was a great thing for our community. It's really awakened the west side of our town. I think Sam Walton would tell us, just as he did before he passed away, that the number one thing in this company is our associates. And we've got stores that aren't treating associates as well as they should be treated. And, um, you know, it's a community college. I didn't have much for anything else. You know, I was doing really well, you know. I had a 4.0 average. But life happens, you know. My dad got sick, my mom got sick. And things happen, and it just didn't work out the way I thought it was going to. Right. When I started working there, I had so much pride in my job. I did. Um, I didn't mind being there when they needed me. I didn't mind doing... I knew that we were short-staffed. At that time, I didn't know it was a purposeful thing, that um, that's their intention. They had stacks like this of applications in the back. They just didn't hire them. Right. And then we're told, we don't know what to do. We don't have the people. We don't have this. We don't have that. And, and I really did at first, I, I was really, I, I felt bad for them. It was like, oh, okay, I'll give you an extra hour here. I'll give you, a, I'll come in early tomorrow. Okay, I won't take my day off. Always having to stay late. You're supposed to work till 11, you're there till 12, 1230. Keep the number of associates from being full-time as many as you can. Keep them part-time as much as you can. And, and just keep reducing that, that expense. Uh, the company doesn't allow the stores enough payroll dollars on their budget to get this job done, and the job is enormous. Uh, this company is rolling in the, raking in the dough in the sales. I mean, my store alone did over $100 million in sales the year that I left. Having to get up with the kids, get them, just getting them out to school after four hours sleep. They, they don't care about what you sacrifice. It doesn't matter how many people lose their families. It doesn't matter if the associates have good health care. It doesn't matter anything other than what the bottom line profit is for that store that month. It just makes it really difficult to have a good family life at Walmart. You know, if you squeeze every dime out of them, you go for it. And it doesn't matter what happens to their families. If they fall apart, they get sick, you know. Out of hell with them. If we're troubled by the fact that there are people who work full time who, in fact, cannot provide enough for their families to live decently. It was just impossible for me to pay my bills and pay for daycare and work. Being that you should have plenty of time to go into the office. The money that I did get went right back into Walmart. I get my check, have it deposited, go shopping. I had, when I first started Walmart, I had, I had my kids on the um, Walmart insurance. It got to the point where it just was too much for me to handle. I just couldn't afford it. I'd have to pay my premiums at work, and then when I took them to the doctors, I still had to pay. I always had to pay a chunk of money. I'm proud of the fact that we have the benefits that we have and that we have the wages we have. People that's making seven dollars an hour that has to go to a doctor, they're not gonna be, be able to meet that deductible. And I have an 18-month-old baby, and he didn't have any kind of insurance. When he was sick, I would have to try and fix him myself, like get a medication myself. If he had to go to the doctor, I would have to take it and pay it as I could. Sam Walton believed that it was inappropriate for an associate with illness in the family to have to worry about how were they going to survive the financial impact. I was under my mom's insurance plan with a, a local grocery store that she worked for. And any prescription it was, it didn't matter what it was, it was $5. And now through Walmart, for that one bottle of pills, I'm paying $70. But I can't afford to put my children on the Walmart shirt because it's, it's too expensive. There's no way I can afford to have $75 taken out of each check just for medical. That's why, I, because I'm such low income, I am able to get the Medicaid for the kids through Colorado State. But they're a billion dollar corporation, so I don't see why they cannot offer a better medical package for their associates so that we can afford to uh, get our families on uh, uh, insurance. You start weighing, okay, he's sick, we eat. Which one do we do? Well, Let's give him an aspirin. No matter what anybody says, they're at poverty level. I watch so many people go without lunch in the lounges that I stopped eating in the lounges because 
I just had my managers eating there because I just couldn't stand it. They just wouldn't eat, and we weren't allowed to offer them any money. And uh, there were people I see that didn't eat nothing. They'd take an hour lunch and just sit there. We had full-time employees that worked at Walmart, and they had medical. But the medical was so high, so they had to go out and get medical, some type of government medical. While I was working at Walmart, I was on WIC. It's an excellent program. It saved my life, really, because you got all the formula and cereal and stuff you needed for the baby. And I also went to the Medicaid office. It can be a real hassle having to deal with the offices, but, you know, at least they're there. I'm thankful for the programs that are available, you know. I, it's not a fun situation. It's demeaning. I, I, I always heard people say, you know, oh, they're just, you know, there's so many people who just use the system, use it. I can't imagine that because there is no way I would want to spend any length of time having to do what you have to do to get assistance. You talk about using the system. Look at the way Walmart is using the system. They're promoting people to go to healthy kids and mm -hmm. to get food stamps and section 8 housing and they're the ones that are using the system yeah it's 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 pretty bad when you when you need to tell your employees that all these programs are are, are open, available are available for you because we're not paying you enough money Retail giant Walmart is encouraging its workers to go on welfare. Instead of paying for its employees to have health benefits, she says Walmart is making the government take care of it. In Florida, Walmart has more employees and family members eligible for Medicaid than any other company. Critics accuse the retail giant of using Medicaid and state programs for the poor as its health care plan. This report from UC Berkeley researchers concludes Walmart costs state taxpayers $86 million a year and county taxpayers as much as another $25 million to pick up the tab for public health care, income tax credits, housing subsidies, and food stamps. Evelyn Dees used to work full-time for Walmart, but didn't have company health care benefits. She literally couldn't afford to pay for it, so she turned to government assistance. What the public doesn't understand is that those everyday low prices are based on taxpayer subsidies. Walmart is, is getting away with it because they can. Well, I talked to the regional personnel manager about who was going to take care of the Walmart associates and their health care needs, and he said, let the state do it. The personnel manager told me personally that there's uh, assistance out there for people. They should be able to go, go use it. Use your taxpayers' dollars. I had a list of all of the government agencies and all the different places that people could go if they needed money for their utility bills, if they needed to apply for food stamps, or if they needed to apply for WIC or for Medicaid. So your dignity is not there, your pride is not there. You go to work knowing that you're not making enough money to really make ends meet, but yet you got to go with a smile on your face and, and, and fake it. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Come up with some type of health care that a full-time person can afford and don't have to put on the scale health care or feed my family. Why is it that a corporation that in 2003 had an outstanding $240 billion in sales would not provide a livable wage and affordable health care for their employees? There's nowhere around that there's a company that makes this much money and, and, and still turns around and makes their associates go to the state for aid. And I think my company takes family very seriously and they'll help you achieve anything you want. The possibilities are absolutely endless at Walmart. Think of the careers that get started 
in this company and the difference it makes in people's lives. But most importantly to me, jobs that come with opportunity for personal development. When I first started working at Walmart, I was still in high school. I didn't have any plans to go to college later on. You know, the people that I was working with were just so nice and I, mean, I just thought that was awesome. My job function as a Tyler Express technician is performing an oil service to entire changes, battery service, um, stocking the inside shelves, writing up work orders, which is greeting the customer, running a cash register, you know, ringing people out you know, for just groceries that they bought throughout the store, and they want it all done at the same time. All I'm worried about is the one 4% raise a year that you get from Walmart. You know, I've worked there three years, and I have got, I, think, I believe, a dollar seven raise. I don't have good health benefits. I can't afford to live on my own anymore. Um, it just, most of it is the poor treatment from management at Walmart. I don't know, it's just weird. I've always been kind of quiet and shy. And now, you know, I kind of need to stand up for myself and, you know, my community. So I just, you know, searched the internet for a while and whatever I typed in, it brought up the same thing. You know, I type in employee rights and it'd bring up the union or fair labor practice would bring up the union. These corporate people in the Walmart Corporation, they don't even really like to say the word union. To them, is like a curse word. They just say third party representation is the way they put it. Walmart is very opposed to unions, uh, one of the most anti, if not the most aggressively anti-union company in the history of the United States. Just relentless in their in their search for union activity and try to squelch it, kill it. Look at that, we got a few in there. Ed DePontis. Ed DePontis, he gave you a call, right? He gave me a call and he says that he didn't want nothing to do with the, with the union. He says there was no, no, no. I had a worker that came to me with a piece of paper that someone had typed up on a computer in big, bold, black letters that said, we need a union. Uh, no signatures, that's all it said. That in itself is enough to require me as a store manager to go and uh, make a phone call. And the phone call comes to Bentonville. And that afternoon, I had to personally drive to the airport and pick up three guys that flew in in a corporate jet and pick them up and bring them back to my store. We have to do this for the reasons we started it, you know. What they do is they basically walk in and tell the store manager, you're no longer in charge of the store. Every decision goes through us. They taught me how to profile people. Of course, I didn't know that was the term then. And it was identifying people that were the strongest uh, representatives of the petition to organize or at least get a vote. Neither we need to contact still. Possibility there. You walk up to a couple of associates and they're both talking, they walk away from each other. They gotta go. They're conspiring to do something. Be noisy, be happy, be boisterous. We're here to support folks who are trying desperately to fight against the world's largest richest and probably meanest corporation. The associates in the automotive department were flooded uh, with brainwashing material against the union. I got fooled by a union. Fooled bad. All unions we're getting is taking a cut out of my pay. Yeah, take your money and spend it to help in political campaigns. And help people I don't even vote for. Because they know a union is just messing up. But don't take my word for it. Just ask the associates working here in the building. I can't get within the store for 50 feet before somebody approaches me or there's kind of somebody following me around the store. I was never alone. I was followed wherever I went. Truly, the managers would follow me. During the process of intimidating them, they just make their lives miserable. They do illegal surveillance. They put cameras up in workstations, work areas, break rooms. You got a target on your back and everybody else know. I got to stay away from this person here because I can get fired for talking to this person. They're targeting a lot of it at Josh, you know, they're like, because they were talking about Josh being like held up on their shoulders and parade around. They're like, yeah, he just, you know, using it for uh, a way to get, you know, like attention. And, One of their you know. favorite tactics is to come out and say, we have to freeze all the raises in the store because we can't appear to be bribing anybody. It was a great political ploy by Walmart, in my mind, to say that's why they weren't getting raises 
because some of those employees started putting pressure on the TLE people, Tire Lube and Express people, because, hey, we can't get raises because of you. I was like so scared to go to the break room because they made us all go to break together because it was really dead after that, you know, so we start walking through and like customers and, you know, other associates were like giving us relics. I was like, I'm not going to sit in that break room. They'll jump me or something. And Alicia, she's good. Alicia's way good. Yeah. Talked with her quite a bit. And Cody, we know Cody's good. Right. Cody's with us here. We'll instruct the managers to start hiring associates in the store. And what they do this for is to try to dissolve the percentages uh, of the people in the store that are for the union. See, James. James is another new hire. I'm not even sure who that is. Yeah. But you know, th this is this is our store. This isn't their store. We're the ones, we're making the money. We're, we're the little worker ants, you know? So what's your prediction? Uh, right now I'd say 50-50. Yeah. I mean, the, the few people in the middle are just gonna make it or break it. Yeah. Right yeah. now. I think you lost Alicia. No, I, I've talked with her quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, she's just, she's just kind of hard to read type person. Yeah. I hang out with her and stuff on the weekends, but she's, yeah. she's just definitely into it. She's real strong. Um, I just believe it's really just gonna go like done because you know Cody's not voting Ryan's not voting yes, and I'm still kind of I, I kind of really don't want to vote But then I kind of have to because yeah. you know You're getting all you know freaked out because of you know what they're saying. They're not gonna know how you voted They're not gonna know all it's gonna be is a bunch of numbers right now So we've got six for a no Another six, yes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the fence. The company does everything that it can, and that means anything, and they will kill it. They'll kill the campaign. Walmart winning out, as you said, 17 to one, but the union said- It's not a fair battle. It's not according to the National Labor Relations Act, but when they find that there's a campaign going on, Everything that can be done, fair, unfair, legal, eh, maybe not so legal, is done to keep the union out. Walmart was very lucky to acquire two really good companies. But of course they were already unionized. Walmart had no choice. Because of the union, we get 36 days of vacation a year. Usually people take three weeks in the summer, three weeks in the spring. It depends. You can split your vacations into two or three times per year, or even more often if you prefer. My job is very important, and if I have to fear for my job, it's a bad thing. A very bad thing. If Walmart says we're all a big family and we have nothing to hide, everything's great, then... I don't understand why the colleagues in America can't have a workers' council, can't establish a union. I can't understand that. Walmart is a career. It's not just a job. Good quality of life, uh, good educational opportunities for my children. It is right for the 1.2 million Walmart associates, including more minorities and more seniors that work in any other company in America. Walmart offers the right job at the right time in their lives, and it gives them a step up that economic ladder. My name is Edith Arana. Um, I live here in Southern California. Um, I have two girls. I go to school to be a preschool teacher. I worked for Walmart for six years. They explained to me the different things they offered and the type of company Walmart was. I said, that's the company I want to work for. I always found it um, rewarding to me to help the customer find what they were looking for. I could work wonders. <laughs> do more with less. I know the true meaning of do more with less. Uh, they want the associates to do more and they're going to pay them less. They would come in the office or on the floor, it didn't matter where you were working. Um, they would say, well, you know we have no overtime. There is to be no overtime whatsoever. We may have five baskets 
of clothes that need to be, and merchandise need to be put back. You may have 30 minutes left on your eight-hour shift, but we need those baskets put away. And they usually do it with a smile. You would go along with it because you needed that job. And there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They would let you know one way or the other, if you can't do it, I'll just get somebody else to do it. You are not a person that cannot be replaced. And you know, we're hiring all the time. And in your mind, you go, look, I got these kids at home. I, I just have to make that sacrifice, and you will. They are asked to work off the clock with the implication that if they don't work off the clock, that is what is expected at this particular store, they are going to lose their job. And they do it as a matter of survival. And it comes from the top. Walmart is fighting legal battles with scores of former employees in 31 states. Hourly workers who say the company has cheated them out of hundreds of millions of dollars in overtime pay. The Walmart Corporation paid approximately $50 million to settle an off-the-clock class action suit in Colorado. In Texas, it is estimated that they cheated workers out of up to $150 million in unpaid wages. Our policy is that we pay everyone for every hour worked. <laughs> hey, the CEO of Walmart, that's the best he can do? If you work here, we'll pay you. <laughs> that's it? Work at Walmart. It's better than getting kicked in the nuts. Our district manager actually explained to us how to cheat workers out of overtime. He said, this is how you can come in on your payroll budget for this week. He said, if you had, let's say, three workers that had overtime, maybe an hour or even 20 minutes over 40 hours, he explained to us how to go in the system under a false user ID uh, to get into the computer and move that time to the next week. I've seen managers go in when someone worked uh, 41, 42 hours and change it to 40 hours. The people that are struggling to just live on the basics every day or do without need that extra minute or two on their paycheck. And those are the ones that are victimized the most. I'm not the only one that did it. I've seen every manager except for one general manager do it. Walmart refuses to follow the very American ethic that has served the country well for many years. People should be paid for the work they do. Walmart currently faces lawsuits in 31 different states for wage and hour abuses, potentially involving hundreds of thousands of workers. As a store manager, you're responsible for reducing your expenses every single month. And the only way to do that is to keep the associates' numbers down. I was just getting about 19 hours a week, and that's just, you can't pay bills with that. I mean, it's just, it's not right at all. If you're not getting those full-time hours for that week, that's devastating. It may help them on their bottom line, but it doesn't help you at home. When it comes to jobs, we have good jobs. 74% uh, of our people are full-time. Most people in America don't know that. Although most people in America also don't know Walmart considers full-time employment 28 hours a week, which at their starting wage works out to under $12,000 a year. INS agents arrested 250 undocumented workers in 61 Walmarts across America. We was working from 9 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. We was locked in stores and we could leave store until uh, store manager come morning. Walmart is paying $11 million to settle federal allegations it used illegal immigrants to clean its stores. I'm stunned that they would employ illegal immigrants. Very stunned. <laughs> You're stunned they hire illegal immigrants for nearly no pay? Lady, you just bought a sweatshirt there for 29 cents. Walmart, the world's largest retailer, could be facing the largest lawsuit ever brought against a private employer. Lawyers suing Walmart will file their motion today, and if a judge agrees, the company could be facing a class action, law action lawsuit for discrimination against 1.6 million current and former female employees. I had no idea about the lawsuit, and there were people in my store that had no idea about it also. Members of management that are in the upper echelons of Walmart management talk about how 
women at Walmart are useless. I had done receiving manager, I was operation manager, I was merchandise manager, so it's like I kind of did it all. I cleaned the bathroom every single day. Ken would come to me and he'd say to me, oh, it's, you know, it's your turn again. And I look at him, I said, oh, it's my, it was my turn yesterday, well, you know. And he'd laugh and we'd joke about it and we'd go back and forth and I'd say, I know, I'm the only female that's working out here, so hence I have to clean the bathroom. Nobody said, well, why? A woman been in this company all of these years. You look at the evaluation. Every general manager stated she should be a GM within a year, within six months. Every evaluation. What's wrong with this picture? The company uh, hides the fact that these practices are very systemic. They're they're systemic, meaning that they come out of the home office. Bottom line: If you were a female, you just weren't worth it. You just were not. You you weren't worth the time, you weren't worth the money, you weren't worth the effort, nothing. A blind man. My grandmother was blind. She could see better than what you guys are seeing because you taken the, you put the blinders on. You didn't want to see. Um, when I called, I called um, to file a petition or to file a claim against them just to say that they discriminated against me because I was a woman. I'm Betty. I'm a Walmart associate. I love working at Walmart. I love that they pay me less than men because that means I can't afford to eat as much and I get to keep my figure. Jim got promoted to management over me, but that's okay because he's a cutie. You go get him, honey. When I applied for the assistant manager training program, I didn't get any response back at all. I went through everything that I had done for my store manager and I'd done it like you would do a checklist, said you told me to do this. I did it. You told me to do this, I did it. He agreed on it with a nod, and I said, so now I want what you promised me. And he just bluntly told me, there is no place for people like you in management. And I said, well, what do you mean people like me? And I said to him, I said that I'm a woman or that I'm black. He said, well, two out of two ain't bad. Yeah, I was called milk boy. Uh, nigger, you know, at this particular store. Uh, there was an incident where this this one guy's bicycle they they hung it up in the ceiling and put a rope around it, you know, literally put this lynched this guy's bicycle. This is what they said. But I complained because it was uh, to me it was offensive and uh, it was unacceptable. What happened after that? Nothing. I don't know if I was more devastated than humiliated. But in my mind, the way I love people, I just couldn't see another person, maybe they're not strong as I am, to be able to take that. This woman walked through the hallway and said, uh, any, meeny, miny, mo, catch a nigga by the toe. I reported this incident. Nothing happened. If you complain about discrimination, They'll just let more people out on you to see if they can really work you out of there or whatever. And that's basically what happened to me. I just got tired. I start going backwards in my mind of all the different stuff. And it start clicking and clicking. And the more I thought, the worse I felt. Because I felt to myself, you're an idiot. How could you have not known? I was devastated. The time that I spent on those roads, I could have been at home with my husband. Um, but I wasn't because I was doing my end of what Walmart promised me. If you do this, we will do this. And it was not worth my husband's life. And the worst part about it is, is that nobody will ever know how big this is what happens to people, and there's, there's got to be more people like me out there, but they're too afraid to say anything. I love my job. <laughs> it's challenging, but it's really satisfying. We truly are living the American dream. It's out there, and uh, it's at Walmart. Great citizenship also means that we're going to support the communities that we're in through our charities and the organizations that exist there. You know, I, time I was born, counting Hoover, I have lived under about 30 
I think 36% of the presidents of the United States. I, you think about that. Hoover and Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, Senior Bush, and Junior Bush. So there's uh, 13 presidents out of uh, 43 that I've, I've lived under. We came here in 1959 and started the IGA store, which is independent grocers. We had approximately 150 employees. And on these 150 employees, uh, uh, the full-time employees had, uh, and that was a, a great number of them, had full coverage on uh, in insurance, health insurance. Uh, we also had a 401k pension plan that they really appreciate. You know, in, in small family-owned businesses, you, d you do become attached to your employees, and, and they're very important to you. We always had tried to have a Christmas party or a Christmas dinner where all the employees came, and we'd close the stores. Yeah, and every day after school, I'd get off the bus and run up to the store because we lived a couple of blocks up from it. The baler that we use here is a baler that was left over from uh, when we closed down the stores in the late 90s. I don't believe it's fair the way that, that Walmart can come in with the funding that they get to put their sewers, infrastructure, road, parking signals, ingress, egress, etc. in uh, compared to uh, what the independent retailer gets. Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe it's fair. Well, certainly it's not fair, and I think um, he at one time did go talk to them and Cameron and say, if we're going to run a business here, can you help us? Well, no, they couldn't do that. I don't think it's, it's, it's fair to help them to, to build roads for their business. And on, at the same time, the, the, the store opens, puts others out of business. The competition that we're up against is really was, hasn't caused the problem as much as the, our competition being helped by our government. from one level to the other. They get all the breaks. Walmart's coming in and running us out. We know you helped them or you gave them tax abatements. Will you give us a tax abatement? And no, they couldn't do that. So the, you know, the county nor the city would do that. And of course, everybody knew it was unfair, but what can you do about it? Maybe, well, there's nothing you can do about it on sewer, water, any of that stuff. As far as I know, we never received one dime from the city, county, or, or any place like that. If you tell them that you don't want them in your city limits, there's been nothing to stop them from buying five acres out here outside the city limits, plopping their building down, hooking up to rural water and having all the negative effects on the city and none of the positive effects. It was a super center in Cameron. It took about 40% of our business in Cameron, and about a third of our business here in Hamilton. In Brookfield, it, it took over 50% of our business just overnight. It was hard to make those payments with a wholesaler having problems itself. <laughs> so everything just kind of culminated in everybody having problems. To pay the employees, well, you used the cash from the inventory, and then you didn't have any inventory. In the process of uh, all this, I had to uh, borrow money to put in the stores and with the farm as collateral. It went down from there, so we had no recourse but to, to just close them up. and. It was uh, 40 years of uh, hard work that, uh, that uh, seemed to disappear all, all at once. It uh, wasn't a very easy um, thing to adjust to, but... Uh, and now, 
you can see Irvin still saddened a lot. It certainly wasn't what he planned. But we had a lot of good times, so, you know, he did a lot of things. He knows lots of people, and they respect him, and so I don't know what else you're going to get out of life. I'm going to close that store, and that was a Sunday morning, and, and uh, I went down to open, and just... Yeah, I remember I was, coming down the stairs and sat down on the couch, and Mom told me, and... I started crying. She's like a family member. We were there every day and it was a big part of our life. It was probably my favorite place. I liked being there. They wanted it for me. And I love them to death for it. And but you know, but they wanted it for me and my family. And if Walmart still gains ground and uh, have a monopoly. Where will our families and where will our children be and what will they have to do to work and to to be competitive and uh, in 10 years that the spiral is going, it, it could be very, very serious for the nation. It, it might happen that way now and I hope I, I hope it don't for our children's sake, but it, uh, it can be could be real serious, be a revolution. Uh, I won't say it'd be a civil war, but it'd be a revolution. <laughs> and I don't think anybody wants that. I'm Kim Arceta and I'm a fourth and fifth grade bilingual teacher in Denver, Colorado in the Denver Public Schools at Newland Elementary School. And Walmart received subsidies of about $1.7 million. And with that $1.7 million, our Denver metropolitan area, uh, that, that could have kept the three schools that we just closed down this spring open. I'm Monica Jefferson. I'm a speech language pathologist and I work for Special School District of St. Louis County. Walmart receives over $31 million in subsidy from the Missouri government. Cathedral City made a $1.8 million investment, but because of Walmart's lies and not stepping up to the plate with their commitments, we're short on policemen, we're short on firemen, we've eliminated the recreation division of the city. We're not able to provide the services to our residents that they need and deserve. And we're going to have lives hanging in the balance because we're not going to be able to provide these services. My name is Charles Hasse. I've been a fourth grade teacher in Washington State for many years. When I think of the uh, million dollars that Walmart received for its distribution center and what we could have done there for students, uh, it's outrageous. Taking revenue away from our community that will have a direct impact on our ability to continue to provide some level of service. In Illinois, Walmart has received $100 million in subsidies, and that has affected our school systems. That money could go into our school systems to rehire all of those support teachers that we need back, those support personnel. We could have our school psychologists back, our social workers back, our counselors back. We could pick up, and these programs are being cut because Walmart has received subsidies. Now, what we're facing currently is that Walmart and Sam's Club, which are the same people, for all intents and purposes, have, in fact, for business purposes, decided that they are going to leave our community. And not moving 20 miles away, they were moving two miles away. Not very far away. In fact, one is being built within, right on the property line of our city, which we still will not receive any benefit from. Just outside the city limits. So just as we were about to begin to receive 100% of the sales tax revenue from that deal, we found out that we'd been the chums. To end up with a vacant building of the size that most businesses can't fill. So you have a huge building uh, that sits vacant for months and years. That's why at Walmart, we give back $5 every second to the communities we serve throughout the holidays and all year long to make the season and every day a little brighter. But you know, responsible citizenship also means looking out for the environment. 
we can make a difference in this area of sustainability. One of the most exciting things about a Riverkeeper organization is working with the public. And we have a lot of volunteers that volunteer to keep their part of the Catawba River. Because the Catawba River is dammed 11 times and has 11 lakes on it, we have lakes with codes. And so we call our volunteers code keepers. And these code keepers work to safeguard, protect the Catawba River. Essentially, we did an investigation and we visited um, about seven Walmarts in the Catawba River Valley to see what their environmental practices were and judge whether their current environmental practices would have an impact on the drinking water of the town of Belmont. And what we found in every single case is that Walmart had a practice of storing herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers in the parking lots. What concerned us most about this particular case was the proximity of this Walmart and the creek running right by the Walmart site. And that creek empties right here at the intake site. For me, when I'm out on patrol and on the river and there's a drinking water intake right there, what I know is that there's a mom somewhere who's at a kitchen sink and she's putting water in a bottle to make formula for a baby. And that baby is drinking. The labels on some of the herbicides and pesticides said this product known to cause reproductive harm by the state of California uh, and birth defects. These pallets with bags and bags of this material, many of them broken and busted and spilling on the pavement, every time it rained all this material was washing right into the stormwater and eventually making its way here to the Catawba River, the source of drinking water for almost two million people in the region. So we began calling Walmart to really express our concern about these chemicals making its way into the public drinking water. And they gave me a name and a phone number of somebody in Arkansas, a headquarters to call. And that person, when I talked to them, it wasn't the right person. They said they didn't think they had an environmental um, person that was in charge of handling environmental affairs, but they would try and find out. Tim, this is back. Donna Lisbon. They never called. The river so again, I called back. and I, This time I called their attorneys. I called the person, the contact name they gave me. I called their attorneys and said, look, I'm not getting any answer from anyone at corporate Walmart. And because I haven't, I'm going to start a web log. And every contact I have with you, I'm going to put on my website and report what your response is. And if there's no response, that's what's going to be on our website. And so that's what I did. Two or three days later, they still didn't call back. We then sent them the law. And I elevated the rhetoric and said, it appears to us as if you're violating the storage laws. We are getting ready to contact our attorneys. Still, no one called. Finally, the attorneys for Walmart who had testified in the hearing gave me the name of a person that they thought was their contact. I finally reached that person at Walmart headquarters in Arkansas. And um, he said he had just started the job. He had been in training for the last two weeks and he didn't know what to tell me. So at this time, I started calling the news media and asking them to do a story. We got a great local news station here in Charlotte, North Carolina that responded on camera showing these pallets and pallets and pallets of chemicals, herbicides, fertilizers stored in the parking lots right beside the stormwater drain. It ran in the morning, the noontime, the six o'clock and the evening news on that day. It just so happens that the Walmart manager for the local story where most of the video was shot that had 81 pallets of this material out in the parking lot saw the story. Called his regional manager first thing the next day and said, you won't believe what I saw on the news last night. And for all his stores in the region, he had them pull those chemicals from the parking lots and put them undercover. As I read the case history and all the environmental fines and particularly the consent decrees from the Attorney General's office ordering Walmart to establish better environmental protection. What flabbergasted me most about the lack of corporate response is their apparent disregard for these consent decrees and that they hadn't taken them very seriously. It's only the local guys. I can say in my history as Riverkeeper, I don't think I've ever encountered a corporation, be it a power company, an oil company, as unresponsive as Walmart. Wildlife conservation is very important to me, but it's really exciting when a company like Walmart makes it a priority too.
We have a great relationship with the Chinese government. They have treated us uh, very fairly in, in what they have done. They actually, much like in the U.S., they hold us to a higher standard, a higher standard of sanitation, higher standard of employment. My name is Wang Dekui. I'm 21 years old. I'm from the Shanghai province. My family plants corn, patties, and potato. I wanted to earn some money so that their life could be easier. At least, I didn't want their life to be too hard. They would work from dawn till night. They would begin to work on the farm at daybreak and wouldn't get back until night. I thought about working in the factory when I was in middle school. At the time, I thought that it would be interesting and exciting to work in the factory. I left my hometown on April 29th this year and then began to look for a job in Shenzhen. At that time, I had a friend working in that factory who also came from my hometown. So I went to see my friend each day at the factory gate, which is just in front of Wen Yi's room. My name is Wen Yi and I come from Hunan province. He heard my dialect when I was talking with my friend. Then he spoke with me using the same dialect. He asked me where I was from. I didn't tell him the truth. I said I was from the Shangqing area. He served for the army in Shangqing for a couple of years, so he can speak the Shangqing dialect. That's the way we got to know each other. My girlfriend and I work in the same Walmart factory. She works in the old workshop and I work in the new one. I am on the night shift and finish work at 7 in the morning. She begins to work at 7.30 each morning and works overtime until 10 p.m. We don't have much time to spend together, but whenever there is an opportunity, I'll cook some delicious food for her. We like singing karaoke shopping around and buying some little things. In that way, we feel more relaxed. Most of the times, we go to karaoke, sing songs and listen to music, and we get in a good mood. We tend to rent a room outside and cook by ourselves because the meals offered by the factory are really disgusting. However, the dilemma is whether you live in the dorm that the factory allocated or not, they always deduct the rent from our wages. You have no choice but to live inside. If you're going to move out of the dorm, the factory will tell you, you can move out and we will not charge you electricity or water, but rent will still be charged. You see, if we live inside the dorm, we pay not only the rent, but also the utilities, which is charged by how much you use. There are very few fans installed in my current workshop. It's extremely hot inside. If they plan to install a new fan, then the others will tell us that we can only have one fan, or the fans that are there. In my working position, there is no wind at all. Can you imagine? I'm sitting there and dripping with sweat all day long. My body never gets dry. Walmart informed the factory that it was going to send people here for the inspection, and they will tell us how to lie for the inspector. For example, the workers must respond as though they worked six days when asked how many days they worked, even though they actually worked for seven days. Then we workers don't dare to say anything wrong because we're really afraid of being punished by managers. Walmart informs us in advance and has a meeting to teach us how to lie. If you lie well, you'll be rewarded. If not, you'll be punished or fired. The worker is given a fake pay slip, and they never let you have the chance to speak out the truth, but threaten you to deliver false information. Ah! 
We really work day and night in order to get the wage of less than three dollars a day. My mom wants me back home because she feels it's too toilsome. But I don't think so. Everybody else here has the same situation as me. If they can do this, I can do it also. I always think about my mom when I'm very tired. That would be wonderful if she could be here with me. She takes care of me very well when I'm sick. She'll let me have a good rest and cooks anything that I'd like to eat. She's really very nice to me. I would respectfully like to ask the boss of Walmart to give the Chinese workers some consideration and a chance for a little time off. Customers of Walmart, when you wear expensive clothes, when your children play with high-quality toys, think about China and the Far East. Those profits you made and the wonderful life you have are the sweat and tears and overtime working of Chinese people. If one day I encounter a lady who just bought a toy from Walmart, I'll say, respectable customer, respectable Walmart customer, do you know why you can buy such a cheap toy from Walmart? That's because we workers work all day, every day and night. We added 125,000 new jobs around this world this past year. Good job. <laughs> jobs of benefits, jobs that will have profit sharing and retirement savings accounts for our associates. But most importantly to me, jobs that come with opportunity for personal development. 189,000 young women in Bangladesh who are sewing garments for Walmart. These workers are getting up at 5.30 in the morning. They brush their teeth with their finger using ashes from the fire because they can't afford a toothbrush. Forced to work from 8 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, 14 hours a day, 7 days a week on these wages of 13 to 17 cents an hour. These are women who are hit by their supervisors, trapped in utter misery. As the largest company in the world, Walmart sets the standards that other companies are going to follow. So Walmart right now is sucking down standards all across the world. These are workers who have no rights. The outlook for this company today is very positive. In every country that we operate in, the Walmart model works. Because once your associates know that you will stand up for what is right, then when they see a wrong occur, they're more likely to contact you. And we have a very aggressive program underway to make sure, and have had now for the last couple of years. I was a global services manager uh, for Mexico, Central, and South America. My job function entitled three things. Uh, oversight of all factory certifications which means you go in there and you make sure that they're humane working conditions big deal with the factory certifications is to make sure that the workers are in a clean safe humane environment when I was in the factory and you know you talk to the people and the people were so nice and they were so good and they were just working for so little money and without any you know, condition of fairness whatsoever uh, with their compensation and their working conditions. I went back to my hotel room and just wept the first time. And, you know, after dinner, I had picked up the phone, I was calling my wife and just telling her what I'd seen. And then, you know, I just started crying about that. You know, telling her, she was like, it's going to be all right. You know, and I'm like, oh, I know, we're doing the right thing, but, you know, I just I couldn't imagine it was this way. I thought that a company like Walmart, once we started reporting the truth of what was happening in the factory, would take quick action to try and make the working conditions better. I believed in the mission and the culture which I thought existed at Walmart. I led more Walmart cheers than just about anybody that I know. Didn't even mind being the squiggly. 
I mean, if you would have cut me, I would have bled Walmart Blue Blood. I didn't know that we weren't going to make it the goal to correct the violations. And I didn't think that any retaliation would be brought against me for doing my job. I now I realize I was pretty naive, but it just didn't occur to me that Walmart would do anything except for the right thing once they were faced with the truth. I kept going into other factories and seeing the same things over and over again. And it became apparent to me that this was not an isolated issue. All you got to do is follow the money and the ones who are in power right now have tremendous pressure on them to perform like never before. The system was designed to keep the goods flowing to the United States. When push came to shove, they did not stand up and do the right thing. What really happened was we were getting fired for telling the truth about the factory certifications. And that was shocking. It was embarrassing, it ripped my heart out. To have all of that ripped from you and then to get sold out and lied to, Walmart let me down and when I needed somebody to look out for me, even though I was trying to look out for Walmart for years. We want to make sure that our suppliers comply with local country codes, with uh, human rights standards, that people are not underage, that they're paid well. No, it's time to show our pride, to let America shine. Made in the USA, it means something. Made in the USA means a job for somebody. But we've made it our policy to find more U.S. suppliers who can compete. Because American goods mean American jobs. At Walmart, we pledge to support America's sources whenever we can. So you can too. Bring it home to the USA. If we keep our prices low and raise our average wage substantially, we would in fact decrease our profitability disproportionately. And we would sacrifice a healthy chunk of what it is that our shareholders expect from us. It is written in the New Testament, the love of money is the root of all evil. This does not say that money itself is evil. The fact that I shared a room last night with Tom Showy, our CFO, while we were in New York, saved $200. The fact that my dinner was $10 last night save money. You shall not steal. Doesn't this teach us that keeping everything for ourselves is a form of stealing? Or are we commanded to help those less fortunate to find enough to eat? Today I want you to know, however, that five members of that family uh, uh, together are worth a hundred and two billion dollars. The widow and four children have in the last 20 years emerged on the list of the top 10 wealthiest people in the United States. They could easily take 10 billion of that and see to it that every employee of Walmart in the United States has health care, adequate pension, and adequate wages. Well, Walmart, after the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon, they, they uh, apparently decided that they needed to have a, a bunker. There's a facility for the Walton family uh, in case of an apocalyptic attack, uh, a residence that they can live in and reside in in case uh, they had to do that. There's a helipad behind the facility back there where they can come in by helicopter and there's satellite uplink uh, dishes back behind the facility and most of it is underground as you can see. You can't really see much from the gate which is all fortified. Faith means nothing at all if it does not involve us in loving one another as neighbors in compassion for the poor. When you hear these bells at Walmart 
Do you remember the people they're ringing for? They remind us of our friends and neighbors who could use a little help. That's why at Walmart, we give back. throughout the holidays and all year long. Of course, the most important beneficiary of this store is our customer. It's the customer who lives in that neighborhood. I was actually selling cars for about six months, but, but prior to that, I actually had my own business. I was doing uh, wood refinishing on boats. And I actually did quite well at that. So that getting a little too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I was gonna go through all that I went through, I want something to come out of it. You know, something good. There was a truck to one side that had a camp shell and there was a van to one side. I thought, you know, I've always said, you know, you don't want to be in a spot where nobody can see you. But I thought four car spaces from the do front door and I thought they had security outside. Okay, well, I should be fine. And uh, when I got out, two, there was two of them. Uh, unfortunately, he caught me. I got outside, but he caught me, and that's when I realized he had a gun, because he had a gun in the arm that was holding me. And that's when they told me, get back in the car, I'm going to blow your head off. The year before, when I worked at the phone company, we had a safety meeting, and it was around Christmas time and it was, they had the sheriff's department out there and they were talking about if you're ever in a parking lot and this happens, what to do, don't go with them. If you go with them, you're likely not going to live because I guess it's statistically that's what happens. They'll kill you. That's what first went to my mind is that I'm, yeah, I'm not going to survive this. Um, sorry. Um, so that's why, you know, the decision to jump out, because I thought, you know, I want to, either chance or I want to choose, you know. And I didn't, because I thought they were going to rape me too. When he said he didn't want the car, I thought they were going to rape me. Um, so when they, fought, they got me back in the car after looking at the gun, I just kind of resigned to, the, you know, it, like I couldn't, there was nothing I could do. And I just kind of went, you go kind of cold inside. This is the parking lot where Laura Tanaka faced her attackers. Inside the store, Walmart had more than 200 security cameras and four security guards on patrol. Outside, there was nothing. The police did recommend on-site security and that there was none. That they had assured the people in the neighborhood that they would provide um, security and make sure it was safe for the neighborhood. And that wasn't done. It was evident that Walmart knew they had substantial problems in their parking lots. Walmart was aware that the majority of the crime throughout the states occurred in their parking lots. Despite the fact that 80% of the crime occurred in their parking lots, they had done almost nothing to protect the customers in the lots. Rape, murder, kidnapping, all of these shocking allegations, and they come from Walmart shoppers. Report of a Walmart parking lot attack. Tonight, North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be kidnapper. A violent attack in the parking lot of an Orange County Walmart. At least one man tried to carjack, rob, and shoot a woman. Who shot and killed 33-year-old Mark Karenik in the store's parking lot. A bold and deadly shooting. It happened this morning at the Walmart. Taylor's woman is recovering tonight after fighting a thief in a Walmart parking lot. 
A man is arrested after a tire iron attack. It happened in a parking lot of this Walmart. The two teenage workers shot while gathering carts in the parking lot yesterday at this Glendale Walmart. It happened at 1.48 this morning in the Walmart parking lot in Riverdale. She turned to run from the subject and was shot in the back. Walmart has conducted research on crime in its parking lots, and critics accuse the company of a nationwide pattern of covering up that research, of failing to turn it over in lawsuits. Here's what Walmart did not want to show. As early as 1994, as you can see in this internal document, a Walmart study showed that 80% of crime at Walmart locations occurred in the parking lot. And when the company added roving patrols at several sites, the crime rate dropped to as low as zero. A district judge in Beaumont tonight is fining Walmart stores $18 million. Judge James Mahaffey is sanctioning Walmart for what the court believes was a pattern of deception. It involves the case of a Southeast Texas woman who was sexually assaulted and raped in the parking lot of Walmart. The court found that Walmart did not disclose that it had conducted a safety study. A study that found if Walmart would put employees in golf carts patrolling its parking lots, crime there would drop to zero. Judge Sherilyn Wood heard a case against Walmart in Houston, Texas in 1999 involving an assault in a Walmart parking lot. She says that in 17 years on the bench and over 25,000 cases, she's rarely seen such flagrant abuse of the system. It was very disturbing to see such uh, an, an intentional course of conduct. It was corrupt. She's charging Walmart with cheating in court, and she's not the only one. This is one judge. Is there something in the drinking water in Arkansas that says perjury is all right? Another judge. Rarely has this court seen such a pattern of deliberate obfuscation, delay, misrepresentation, and downright lying. True. Unfortunately for the customer, they really don't care what goes on after you spend your money in there and come out into the parking lot to go home. Police found Holden shot to death along the side of a road in Stanton, Texas, 400 miles from where she was abducted. Megan was uh, very special. We grew up together. We lived together. She's really, really going to be missed a whole lot because she has a lot of people that love her. She was just a very sweet person. And she didn't want it a whole lot out of life, but she just wanted to live and, you know, be happy. That's all she wanted. Just recently, before she died, she, um, we were in her room listening to a CD, and uh, we were singing together, and we could just be open with each other. We didn't care. Police say Megan Holden was chosen at random on the way to her pickup truck in the Walmart parking lot just before midnight. After that crime was caught on surveillance video, police say Williams, a Marine veteran with a history of drug offenses, sped off in Holden's truck heading west where he apparently murdered the 19-year-old junior college student and dumped her body near some railroad tracks in the West Texas town of Stanton. I just think that there's a lot of things Walmart could have done. There should be somebody watching the cameras. Somebody should have been watching the cameras. Walmart has those cameras out there in their parking lot, and I thought that they were watching. A security camera without someone watching it is of no use at all. The abduction and murder that happened in Texas happened at a store where the loss prevention team was sent in to set up a security system outside that would track the union activity in that store. And the only reasons that they had the pictures that they did was because they had the union package on the outside of the store. Walmart focuses on protecting their property and not their patrons. When a multi-million dollar company, can you pay somebody $12 an hour to watch a camera? If people are putting profits before safety, they're putting profits before uh, human life, I don't think there's anything you can say to them. A man is suing the Walmart in Newcastle saying his mother died after a botched robbery attempt in a store's parking lot. The random Dale shooting Berkeley happened here, here that three people are dead and three others injured. The shooting happened right in the middle of a busy shopping day. At least one man tried to carjack, rob, and shoot a woman. In the Walmart Report of a Walmart parking lot attack. Tonight, North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be hey, kidnapper. Right Bold and deadly shooting. Shooting it happened in Texas. Random shooting. Kidnapping and killing a 
Walmart stores has a responsibility to society to make sure that what we do fits in and represents what it is society expects from a big company. We need to figure out how do we in fact work together to cause them to want to have a Walmart. On December 6th, there was an article on the front page of our local paper and it said that Walmart was going to build a super center on the corner of Queen Creek and Alma School, which is just a very short distance from my house. And this particular location was within our planned community, and it was within walking distance of an elementary school and a junior high school. And I felt that it was an inappropriate location for something of that magnitude. So I decided to form a, a campaign and say, no, Walmart, in our neighborhood. Living as Christ has taught us, we begin to transform the world. This transformation is visible in the reading that we have from Acts. We're really trying to show why the work that we're doing is the work of the gospel. The lesson we learned in Inglewood is that we have the ability through our democracy to take power and take control and actually hold big companies accountable. As a nation in this world, the most powerful, the most affluent, we have the power to make sure that all have what they need. That this is not some pie in the sky vision, but instead that this is our call as Christians to make this happen. One of my neighbors and I, went and handmade some little posters and we decided that we were going to have a meeting in the local park which was about a block from here. We had no idea how many people would show up. We were absolutely amazed and all of them wanted to do something. In the beginning it was only a few of us. Not a lot of people came to the meetings. Only some supermarket workers and a couple of churches remember. And then little by little, more people until they started feeling the pressure. They wanted to build the Walmart on this whole parcel. It was going to be 215,000 square feet. And there was going to be... Walmart was going to take this whole space. It's like 17 football fields big. And they were going to build one big box that was Walmart, and then little stores in between, and then another big box that was Sam's Club. People volunteered to do the various chores that we had. And then we solicited what I call a court committee, and that was a group of people who would be responsible for the strategy, the press releases, everything that needed to be done to organize our campaign. So then the coalition started getting bigger and bigger, and before you knew it, everybody felt like if they weren't part of a coalition for a better Inglewood, they weren't standing up to defend the community. And I think the other lesson learned in Inglewood is that there's no kind of magic potion to suddenly you click this, you put this together, and suddenly you're going to win. It's a hard process. There are a lot of things that you have to put in place, um, but when you put those things in place, you can win. It includes the ability to organize regular people, small business owners, workers. We got our message focused. We hammered away on the phones, hammered away on doors. People saw us coming and going when they went to church. Every time they went to a store in Inglewood, there was a, a flyer about our, our effort. We held rallies. It includes a legal strategy, enough resources to have the research, to be able to make your case, to be able to have the materials. It includes the ability to get at your message through the press, um, to do media events. It grew to 187 volunteers, and we had block captains, and we had area chairmen. We proceeded to gather signatures on our petitions. And we started out with 1,500 signatures, and by the time we got through, we had 4,000 signatures. And they were all from people within our, what I call our area code, our zip code. Zip code. Zip code. Zip code. Mm -hmm. 
Inglewood is the first test for Walmart's ambitious plans in California, and activists say the stakes here are huge. This is like Godzilla eats Tokyo. This is much bigger than David and Goliath. All of the information that was coming from Walmart kept saying it's a done deal, there's nothing you can do about it, we have our zoning, um, don't waste your time, but <laughs> we knew better. Then we had numerous public meetings to let the public know what was happening, what the status was. It is not like they came into the small towns in the south or towns that have no business and they brought in business. No, 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 this is something completely different. They represent from Bentonville, Arkansas, plantation capitalism. The future of this community depends on our ability to stop the monster in its tracks. Walmart sponsored the ballot initiative after Inglewood City Council opposed building a Walmart supercenter on the site. Today, Walmart opponents charge the initiative, Measure 4A, hijacks the city's planning process. It is 71 pages of legal fine print that seeks to cut the community out of its own development process. What they did was essentially tell the city of Inglewood, get out of here. We are the biggest corporation in the world. We can go in and essentially buy an election. We held public meetings. We did our letters. We held private meetings with city council members. We were out on the street and doing the work to ensure that people understood that to those who much has been given, much will be expected. I'm sure the Walton family believes that they're a good Christian family. Not if they're going to make billions at the expense of poor workers. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that think that they're good Christian companies. Not if they're going to make money off the backs of people who are suffering. A lot of people sacrificed an awful lot to have all the freedoms that we have. And that flag to me represents all of our freedoms. Our freedom to fight Walmart, our freedom to live where we want to, work where we want to, have a say in our government. They can say and believe whatever they want about, you know, trickle-down theories of capital and whatever else, whatever other nonsense they want to invent to hold on to their capital. But um, then as Christians, we don't have that option. But that's not our option, that we're not about capital. And we're about people. We came before the city council for the final vote, and the council voted 6 nothing Some to deny Walmart and Vestar, the developer, the right to build the store Some on that property. Residents of Inglewood, California, are voting today on whether to approve the construction of a new shopping development dominated by Walmart. That night, we gathered at a local restaurant, hoping for a miracle, but braced to go back to court if the measure passed. And now the votes are coming in on a proposed Walmart Superstore in Inglewood. 3,000! This small group of people took on a giant and won. And it was really beautiful because nobody took on the way to see the future place. The city council in Monroeville, Pennsylvania, handed Walmart their hat today. Walmart packed its bags in Cobb County, Georgia. Community resistance paid off for Hickory, North Carolina. Walmart hit the road. Anti-Walmart candidates sweep the Helotus, Texas election. Another trip down the long and dusty for Walmart in Biloxi, Mississippi. When you have a group of people, a small group of people, who don't want you in a community, does that mean you're not going to go there? Thornton, Colorado defeated Walmart. Walmart, beat me Walmart loses me. to Plainfield, Illinois. Las Vegas, Nevada defeated Walmart. When Walmart defeated Lake Wade, Texas, Small Girl, who don't want you, Walmart defeated who don't want you, don't want you in the community. Walmart loses to Charlevoix, Michigan. Walmart beat me. Walmart loses to Chicago, Illinois. Walmart zoned out. Blackstaff, Arizona. Walmart rejects Walmart. Victory, Colchester, Connecticut. Success, Centerville, Utah. Victory, Harrison, New Jersey. An anti-Walmart slate was elected to city council in Deptford, New Jersey. Voters rejected Walmart in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Walmart 
a Walmart man? Defeated. In Glendora, California. Walmart beaten in Medford, Oregon. Picture you? One million people a year visit Washington's adult home at Mount Vernon. And on this President's Day, there was disbelief that anyone would dream of disturbing his boyhood farm. Because there's plenty of places for a shopping center, but there's only one Washington farm. Surveyors have already marked off the property line for the Walmart. Oh, yeah, that's history. They shouldn't destroy a piece of history like that. The Hawaiian group sued, claiming Walmart and the state violated grave desecration laws and public trust. Where do you get off coming here, uh, you know, a foreign... What if it was their great-grandfather that was desecrated? For now, the remains are being stored in a trailer below a ramp leading to a parking garage at Walmart. We put a sign up in the uh, Worthington, Minnesota store that was, it was 10 feet over the uh, city code there and the building inspector red tagged it and the next thing I know that there's an overnight they, they call me and tell me there's an overnight package coming for me and I'm to take it to this person the envelope wasn't sealed and so I just opened it up and there's a ten thousand dollar check and I gave it to the individual and uh, the very next day the red tags off the sign You have a group of people, a small group of people, who don't want you in a community. Does that mean you're not going to go there? <laughs> 